Uh, we have with us Dr. Alexei Muraviev, Associate Professor of National Security and Strategic Studies at Curtin University. Now, Dr. Muraviev, the optics of Russia not being able to keep up with arms production, what does it tell us about Putin's war effort in Ukraine? Look, I mean, it's a debatable question because we can also say that the optics seem to be negative with regards to NATO that is scrambling to assemble sufficient military aid to the Ukrainians. I mean, the Russians increased the, 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 the production of their prim primary weaponry, but simply the sheer scale and the intensity of the conflict is something that I think not, neither of the warring sides were able to calculate properly. So to keep up with high intensity uh, operations temper, especially with the use of the artillery. The Russians are now seeking for alternative means to acquire additional munitions. I mean, uh, they have reached to the uh, to the Iranians for the supply of uh, UAVs, and it seems now, it, it, I mean, this is ongoing speculation that North Korea may be uh, viewed as a, as a source of acquiring additional artillery munitions, mortar shells. Uh, et cetera, et cetera, simply because of interoperability that exists between what North Koreans are producing and what the Russians are using, because a lot of uh, North Korea's um, uh, military technology is based on, on the Soviet design or the Chinese clones of Soviet military technology. Dr. Moraviev, uh, North Korea also wants several things from Russia, including food aid, energy, advanced weapons technology. Uh, what would Moscow be most willing to provide? Look, I don't think that the, the, the Russians will have any problems with assisting uh, North Korea with, with regards to offering its agricultural produce, because Russia uh, has certainly uh, been dominating the, the grain and, and wheat experts, and they have uh, been stockpiling considerable reserves of, of, of that uh, strategic agricultural source. So I think the Russians would be quite happy to do it vis-a-vis um, uh, -vis North Korea in the same way as they've been promising to do it towards friendly African nations. With regards to the transfers of high-end um, military technology or dual-use technology as well, this is where it gets very interesting because the Russians continue to support the international sanctions regime that's been imposed on Pyongyang in an attempt to uh, hold its uh, nuclear missile program. So by resuming uh, the transfers of some sensitive technologies overtly, um, the Russians would effectively indicate that they are pulling out of the international sanctions, sanctions regime. And if, if we're talking about specifications, well, the North Koreans would probably want to access to some of Russia's space technologies. They would probably want to get some uh, assistance with acquiring perhaps nuclear submarine technology as well as uh, air defense systems. So, I mean, the Russians can obviously offer the North Koreans um, uh, capabilities that would allow Pyongyang to, uh, to, to, to close some technology shortfalls or gaps that currently exist and North Koreans cannot really proceed on in exchange, obviously, for what the Russians may, may be wanting. But he having said that, I certainly want to highlight that we should not just be assuming that this is just about some sort of a bargaining game where Russia gets something in exchange of providing North Korea with something. What I would be more concerned is to see if this uh, current resumption of bilateral relationship would transpire into something a bit more substantial and long-lasting. Uh, picking up on that, Dr. Muraviev, some analysts say North Korea would only really act according to what has been agreed upon with Beijing. Uh, what role do you think China has to play in this? Well, China would definitely be one of the key factors that would determine Beijing's behavior. Uh, on the other hand, I also want to argue that there is a degree of mistrust that exists between North Korea and, and, and China, even though North Korea is almost entirely dependent on China's economic aid. Kim's family, on, 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 on the other hand, has a very strong, uh, very strong and, 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 and long-lasting relationship with, with the Soviets and, and the Russians. And I think there is a degree of personal affinity towards Moscow in the eyes of uh, North Korea's leadership. So the trust matter may well actually allow B uh, Pyongyang to uh, develop a more trusted relationship with, with, with the Russians also on the basis that uh, Russia 
has been pivotal to ensuring a North Korean sovereignty in, in, in the past, uh, in its capacity of being the Soviet Union. And, and, and certainly there hasn't been as much of a sort of, you know, overwhelming dependency uh, as in the case between Pyongyang and, and, and China. So whilst North Korea may be guided uh, by some of the directives it may be receiving from Beijing, but I don't think it's, it's, it's the kind of regime that would listen unconditionally and bow to everything the Chinese would maybe telling them. I think that it would still be acting in its own interest. And Dr. Moraviev, looking more broadly at countries that buy or depend on military equipment from Russia, uh, what does this mean for them that Moscow needs to acquire older munitions from North Korea? Look, I don't, I don't think it will have any significant detrimental impact on, on the way how Russia will be perceived as the global supply of, uh, of, of military weapons and, and, uh, and, and systems. I mean, running out of munitions is not something unusual. I mean, we've seen that some NATO countries now experiencing shortages in their stockpile simply because they have been donating continuously to, to the Ukrainian war effort. And, and no one doubts the capacity, for example, of the U.S. military industrial complex to replenish those stocks. And same goes for a number of uh, major defense producers in, 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 in Europe. I think what would have a potentially detrimental impact on, on Russia's uh, perception as a, as, a, as a supplier of military technology, if, if it will end up suffering military defeat at the hands of the Ukrainian backed by the United States and NATO. So... Any battlefield successes will definitely be converted into marketing success uh, for for both war, warring parties. So I, I don't think that uh, that particular situation of Russia is trying to acquire something it currently lacks would have any negative impact. But it also all depends on, on, on the campaign. And I'm sure we would see a very stiff fight for the control of, a, of a regional as well as global defense markets, which are also certainly going to be the case for the Indo-Pacific, which continues to be one of the uh, largest uh, procure, uh, procure, uh, procuring areas of uh, leading military technologies. And Doctor, one last quick question. What are the implications for the war in Ukraine if Russia gets what it wants? It will only fuel the war effort. The Russians would be would have enhanced capability to use its overwhelming firepower against the Ukrainians. It also depends on how far North Korea will be prepared to go in supplying Russia. If it if it will go beyond just supplying Russia with artillery, munitions, shells, etc., but will start feeding some of its indigenously developed technologies. While it would certainly take the, take the conflict into a different level, it would certainly escalate uh, the war effort because I'm sure that would also be perceived by South Korea, Japan, live along the United States as a threatening move. So we may see up in anti on, 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 on their ends with regards to assisting Ukraine with even more war efforts. So one way or another, this is another way how the fumes of this war would be fueled and, 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 and expanded. Doctor, thank you very much for your insights. That was Dr. Alexei Moraviev, Associate Professor of National Security and Strategic Studies at Curtin University.